one of the most consistent comments that comes up in every single video that I ever make about manufactured homes is that they're tornado magnets. I've tried to debunk this myth at least four or five times. How could they possibly be tornado magnets? Like the centrifugal force that comes through the sky automatically says, wow, look, there's a manufactured home. We're gonna go ahead and touch down right there and just destroy these particular homes, but no other homes. It doesn't even make any sense. WLKY's Aaron Haynes is live from the Sunset Mobile Home Park with a look at the damage there. So I went ahead and was going to prove to you that manufactured homes are not tornado magnets. But the answer wasn't as cut and dry as I thought. Tornado devastated El Reno, Oklahoma. This twister tore through a mobile home park. If you take 60 years of weather reports and put them all together, they found that tornadoes do touch down in what they call in transition zones. And what transition zones means, the area has been cleared to death. There's gonna be nothing but flat land and that's what happens a lot of times when you're building a house or putting in a manufactured home. They clear the land and there's nothing to protect the, you from any kind of wind. And it's a straight shot for a tornado to go right through and it doesn't matter if it's a manufactured home or not. But it just seems to be that manufactured home parks always do this. They always take out all the trees and it's easy for a tornado to cut right through it. And that's why you always see the news reports. All of this debris used to be on that mobile home. One thing I learned is that when it comes to tornado damage, a manufactured home is actually 50% more likely to have severe damage in a regular home, which shocked me to death. And I wanted to know a little bit more why. Why is that? Well, the truth of the matter is, not only are they in areas that don't have a lot of trees, a lot of these manufactured home parks also have a lot of older manufactured homes. So any manufactured home that was built before 1976 is considered a mobile home or a trailer. They're not built to any kind of standards whatsoever. Now, any manufactured home that was built before 1992, 1993, they were built to withstand not such of a high wind factor. So what is it that happened in 1992 and 1993 that made the manufacturing home industry change the amount of wind that a manufactured home could withstand? Well, Hurricane Andrew. If anybody ever lived during that time, you saw many news reports of manufactured homes that were obliterated. It wasn't just manufactured homes, it was a lot of regular built homes as well. The building standards, not just for manufactured homes during that time changed, they also changed for standard building because the place looked like a nuclear bomb went off. With that being said, in the state of Florida, they decided that they needed to make a better standard when it came to wind resistance and hurricane resistance in certain wind zones, especially in that hurricane zone. If you're in a wind zone three, you're gonna have the highest amount of protection when it comes to a manufactured home. So wind zone three are designed to resist winds to about 110 miles per hour. If you get another manufactured home that is for wind zone two, that's for 100 miles an hour. And then if you have one for a uh, wind zone or zone one home, it's built for all the, all the other areas that are not in a high wind area. Now, if I was to buy a manufactured home, I don't care what part of the state I was in, if I was in a high wind zone area or not, I would definitely buy a wind zone three. And here's the reason why. Last summer, those new codes were fully tested when Hurricane Charlie hit Florida, and the results were impressive. Take a look at these pictures from Punta Gorda. An older, poorly anchored mobile home is ripped to shreds, while right next door, a newer home designed to meet the more stringent standards remained intact. But that's just if you live in a hurricane area. We're talking about tornadoes. Tornadoes are completely different. And there's many manufacturing companies that will show you videos like this. The home you'll see here was placed in 105 mile an hour winds for about 30 minutes. That's more than four times longer than a typical tornado stays on the ground. That's a great story, but we're talking about tornadoes. When it comes to a tornado, we have one that has centrifugal force. I hope I'm saying that right. That's a big word. 
And with a hurricane, it's sustained winds. It's moving in one direction, generally, for a long period of time. And then once the eye hits, it goes into another direction. But with a tornado, it's like 180 miles per hour heading straight for you at one time. And it's extremely powerful. The other aspect of tornadoes that we need to think about is the fact that it actually picks up things and throws them into other areas. So what do you do if you have a manufactured home? I still say, and many of the experts and anybody that's in the industry will tell you that you should leave your manufactured home. Some manufactured companies I've heard say they're just as reliable as a traditional built home. When it comes to tornadoes, I still say let's err on the side of caution. And if all the experts in the weather industry are telling you to leave, you need to leave your home. This is how you're gonna plan ahead if you do have a tornado or extreme weather coming towards your home. Before you even buy your manufactured home, either from a real estate agent or you're buying it from a dealer itself, always find a location away from your home that would be a safe for a tornado, some kind of shelter, something that's gonna be open to you 24 hours, seven days a week that you can go to when you know that there's extreme weather heading towards your home. The second thing you can do is make sure that you have weather alerts on on your cell phone. There are many apps that you can get that will alert you when the weather is coming. Many of them are already built into your smartphones. The woman in this apartment said that she did get an alert on her phone, which she is grateful for because it may have saved her life. If you don't have a smartphone, you can always get a weather radio. They still have those and they will alert you when severe weather is heading towards your home. Whether that severe weather is saying that it's willing to produce tornadoes or not, I suggest if the weather looks bad enough, get out of your manufactured home. If you do have a manufactured home that you found a location that you're going to visit once there's severe weather, make sure everybody in your house knows where this location is. Because sometimes, like me when I was a kid, I got off the school bus and there was a tornado heading straight for my house. If I didn't know the location of where I was supposed to meet people, I could have been in serious trouble. Because I was a kid, I didn't know any better, I probably would have walked right towards the house. So always make sure everybody in your house knows the action plan when a tornado is heading towards your home. Generally when tornadoes come through an area, they don't take that long to hit. Matter of fact, I was really quite surprised. I could feel the pressure in my ears coming and then it just seemed like it was just really loud and noisy for just like three seconds and then it was done. When you exit out of your shelter or wherever you're planning on staying during a severe storm, make sure that you have the right kinds of shoes on. Don't walk out with bare feet because if there's a lot of loose shingles or anything like that, there's gonna be nails up in the air. This is true of hurricanes as well. Even though the facts may say that manufactured homes may have a tendency to get hit by tornadoes more often, that doesn't mean that they are a tornado magnet. And with that being said, if you have a good action plan ahead of time, you're gonna be just fine. I do believe that manufactured homes are a great affordable housing option for many people. I also believe they're a fantastic way to help house our homeless veterans. I know that if you've watched any of my videos, I have told you my three year plan is to get as many veterans in manufactured homes or tiny homes, either or, as many as we can. There's 40,000 homeless veterans in the United States. And in my opinion, and in many other people's opinions, that is just unexcusable. So I still think we can do that. And I think that manufactured homes are a great housing option for those homeless veterans. If you're with me and you know somebody that would be willing to help me with this project, please email me. All my contact information is listed below. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer. And I tell you all this because you matter and please be safe.